So I'm going to start by introducing Karen Olson, who is uh, one of the project officers at Hand Hygiene Australia, and she's going to talk about some updates to the Hand Hygiene Compliance application. So Hand Hygiene Compliance data is collected by healthcare facilities across Australia as part of the National Hand Hygiene Initiative. And many of you here will know that the data ends up in a database called HICAP, which is short for Hand Hygiene Compliance Application. So HICAP was launched in 2010 and has evolved over time with many enhancements along the way. Currently in the database there's over 8 million, 8 million moments, 902 organisations um, submitted data last audit period, there's over 1,200 organisation administrators and over 9,000 auditors. So there's a, there's a lot of use of this database. And HICAP has also been um, used by New Zealand for their national program since 2012. So the aim of this presentation is to highlight some of the new and some of the not so new features of HICAP that will help you manage the administrative side of the database as well as maximise the reporting functionality that is available. So this is the home page of an organisation administrator. An auditor won't see this page. Um, all users, regardless though, should see their name in the top right hand corner of the page. If you don't see your name there, um, you may be using a generic login or you may be using somebody else's login. So if that's the case, you need to contact us to help set your profile up correctly. Every, um, every user should have their own login and shouldn't be a generic one. So to access your login details, click on your name in the top right hand corner and you'll get this details page. So from this page you can update your email address if it's incorrect. You can also reset your password. So if you're a HICAP mobile user, you need to make sure that you have uh, any data on a mobile device has been synced and that you've logged out before you reset your password. So setting up and managing departments um, is one of the functions of an organisation administrator. So once you've clicked on the departments tab on the right, you'll see a list of your departments that appear on the screen. So with the new arrows on the left hand side, you can reorder those departments to however you'd like them to be. And the order that you, uh, you order them to will be what appears in the drop down list when you're auditing and entering data. So if it's a department that you don't use very often or audit very often, you can move that down to the bottom of the list. If it's one that you use frequently, you can move it to the top of the list. So if you click on the name of the department in the list, you'll then open the details page for that department. So departments can now be made inactive. So by unchecking the, the active box and clicking save, you will remove that department from your drop down list when you're auditing. And the benefits there is that it will make that list shorter and more manageable. And it'll also prevent data being entered into uh, departments that have closed. Department names can also be changed by organisation administrators. So one thing to note with doing that is that if you change the name, you change the historical data as well. So all the data that's gone before will change to that new name or that new ward type that you've changed it to. So you may want to consider whether it's a better option to inactivate the department um, and then to create a new department separately if you want to maintain that history. Um, any departments that you make inactive will still be available in reports, so you won't lose that history. Organisation administrators can also manage healthcare work types. And, and again, with, as with the departments, you can reorder those healthcare worker types with the new arrows on the left and have the, the ones that you uh, think are more frequently used um, put at the top and the less frequent at the bottom. So we now have um, 20 healthcare worker types, including the new dental ones, which were added a little, time, a little while ago. So if some of those are not relevant to you, you can click onto the name of the healthcare worker type and you can inactivate it. Um, and that will remove it from um, the list. Um, if there's any data that's ever been collected for that healthcare worker type, you can't delete it. Um, if there's no data, you can delete it, but it's still probably a better option to inactivate it and leave it there as an option if you want it later on. <coughs> so the compliance meters have been a very popular way for um, organisations to display their compliance. And we've had a lot of requests um, to, to add some extra functionality to these. So now what we can do with the compliance meters is that you can go back to previous audit periods. In the past they were live and you got what you got at the time you were looking at it. But now you can go back and look at a previous audit period or, or whichever one you want to. 
If you're an organisation administrator for more than one facility, you can now select which organisation you want to see in the compliance metres. So they will flick around depending on which um, organisation you pick. And that, that was another problem in the past where people um, had more than one facility, but they only got uh, the one that was the, f that was the first in the alphabet, and I think was the way it worked in the past. And you can now print them quite easily with the new print button down on the right. So with data entry into HICAP, the two main ways that data goes into HICAP is by collecting data on a paper form and then going back to your PC and entering that data later on. So that takes a considerable amount of time to first collect it, then go back and enter it. Um, the second method is HICAP Mobile. So HICAP Mobile, you audit on the ward with your device, you enter your data into it, sync it, and it's already in the database. So it's a considerable saving of time. Um, you can also run reports on that data immediately. If you enter, uh, use the paper forms, you have to wait for somebody to enter that data into the database before you can run a report on it. So one of the new features of HICAP is that we can now see how the data is entered. Um, previously, we didn't know how many people were using uh, HICAP mobile versus um, entering via a desktop computer. So audit to uh, 2016, we were able to have a look at the numbers and see that um, in Victoria, 34% um, of data was being entered by HICAP mobile, closely followed by South Australia at 33%, and then 20% for the private sector. So having a look at that, we can see there's a lot of data still going in via desktop computer. And the, the um, p potential for time saving is quite considerable when you look at the amount of data that people are sitting at desktops and entering, which could already be there. So it's something to consider if you're not currently using HICAP Mobile. So now we're just going to have a quick look at some of the reports. Um, the standard reports, uh, these, this list of reports appears under your compliance meters on your home page if you're an organisation administrator. So the standard reports have been there for quite some time um, with a couple of additions and the custom reports are a little bit newer. So the first one that I'm going to look at is the department poster. This is the newest offering that we have. When you click on that, you can check, uh, click your organisation and then select the department in the department box. Uh, to get a poster. If you leave that filter at all, you'll get a poster for every single one of your departments. If that's what you want, that's great. You get a poster for all of your, you know, a lot, a lot of posters all with one click. You can also rename the file in the box down below. And importantly, you should look at the email address in the email box. In, in the email box, if it's yours but incorrect, you can go back to your details page and update your email because that's where the, the file is going to be sent to is that email address. If it's not your email address and, and somebody else's, then please contact us to help you set up your profile correctly um, as all auditors should have uh, their own personalised or all users should have their own personalised um, login. The file will be sent um, to your email address um, as a PDF. You can open it directly from the email. And you can also access that file from the new exports tab, which you'll see across the top. So when you click onto that, you'll see a list of the downloads that you have um, run, and they're available for um, seven days before they disappear. So you can go back and, and download, you know, click on that again and um, print that, that poster off again if that's what you, you need to do. So this is what the new department poster looks like. Um, it gives you compliance by moment, by healthcare worker and some extra details. In most cases, it will print as one page. It will only be if you have a very long list of uh, healthcare workers that it will might run over to the second page. So next we'll look at the newer snapshot and trend reports. So with building the report, the first thing to do is select the demographics, select what it is that um, you're looking for. So I've picked Audit 1 2016 and the hospital that I want to look at. The next thing I need to do is select what I want to see in the report. So I've selected um, organisation, so there'll be a column for organisation, department name, and that yes, I want to see the total number of moments in the report. So once I've generated that report, I'll get a table with a compliance rate for every single department. So I can then download that as a PDF if I wish, or export it to an Excel spreadsheet. 
And if I want to um, generate a graph, I click on generate a graph. If I don't want all of those departments in my graph, I select which ones I want with the boxes on the left hand side. So I have selected a few and I see this graph here which again I can download or print. And if I hover over the, uh, the confidence intervals uh, for each of those departments, I can see the detail um, which will uh, come up as a little pop-up box. So the next one is the trend report and this <coughs> shows us um, compliance over time. So I've selected the, the audit type and I've uh, looked at um, audit 3 2014 to audit 1 2016. So I get the compliance table, I get the data in the table, I can download that and then I can <coughs> select um, what I like to see in my graph. So I've just selected three healthcare worker types to put in the graph and this is what that graph looks like. So I can see the three healthcare worker groups um, across time over a series of um, audit periods. This is just another example of a trend report. This time, um, instead of selecting an audit period, I've selected monthly. So a lot of uh, places do like to do monthly reports and you can do that with these reports as well. So I've selected uh, from January 2015 to October 2015. I've also filtered for the healthcare worker type, so there's uh, just selected medical practitioner and nurses and I've also filtered for uh, ward type and selected surgical. So there's a lot of filtering options available um, that you can use. So the data is um, available in the table which I can download and then I can also uh, generate the graph. So here I can see the two healthcare worker types uh, with their compliance over a range of audit periods. So the last report that I'm going to have a look at is the Auditor and Sessions report. Now this is not a new one. Uh, it's been around for a while, but it's a very important one for organisation administrators to be aware of um, when they want to have a look at uh, their, the amount of data that their auditors are collecting and the compliance rates that they're recording. So this is just a sample of an Auditor and Sessions report. So I'm not sure how well you can see, but there is I've circled around where one auditor has collected 134 moments and has a compliance of 100%. Um, <laughs> the next auditor has 233 moments with a compliance rate of 49.8%. So this is an important port, uh, report to run to have a look at and consider, is this a reasonable result? Is there an explanation that explains this? Um, is this, does it reflect variation across departments? Is it pre and post education? Um, or is there an issue with um, um, the auditing quality that's occurring here? So something you should look at and just have a, a bit of a think about. So with um, the look at running these reports and having a look at the data, the National Office and the Jurisdiction Coordinators um, do run these auditor and session reports every audit period so that we can have a look and have a look at the data across uh, the organisations. Um, so it's important for organisation administrators also to run the reports and have a look and see if there's anything that they need to investigate. So if an issue is, uh, uh, if you find that there's an issue with maybe the, uh, the auditing quality, some actions that you could um, run with are doing some side-by-side -side auditing um, organising some refresher sessions for all the auditors, which we recommend you should do um, each audit period, and also ensuring that the annual auditor validation requirements are met for all, all auditors. So at HHA, we love your feedback. Um, a lot of the enhancements that you've seen have come about through people contacting us and letting us know that there is things that they would like to see in the reporting or improvements to the functionality. So if you have some ideas and things that we can look at to see if we can add into the database, please let us know. Thank you.